Yeah, give me a wave. So, morning everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on a, uh, a Sunday. It's a big effort to be in here. I hope you've all had a coffee. Um, and yeah, I hope this is an interesting chat. Uh, I have got a couple of questions through the, the app. If you wanted to plug a couple more in while you're sitting here, that's fine. I'll try and address them at the end. Um, this, this is a, a bit of an overview. I'll give, you, I'll give you a bit of an overview of what we're going to talk about. So um, I'm John o. Miller. Jonathan is on the board, but most people call me Jono. Um, I've been running Kraken in Australia since 2020, but prior to that, I uh, was involved with a, a local crypto business called Bittrade, and we were founded in 2013. So I've been involved in, in the crypto space for almost, almost 10 years now. Uh, it's been a really interesting journey. There's a lot that's happened. Uh, and I think, you know, the buzzword of the day is Web3, um, but I think that that's just another way of talking about how crypto is being used. So, yeah, today we want to, I want to talk about uh, trust and security. And I think, you know, what better way to, 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 to you know, why? You know, when, when they asked me uh, about what I wanted to talk about at, at, this, at this event, um, I thought this was a really important message because, um, well, fundamentally... Kraken was born out of this kind of disaster. You might not have, you might have been around. You might have been, you might have had uh, Bitcoin or crypto then. It was pretty much only Bitcoin. Um, but Mount Gox was a really, a really big deal in terms of crisis. It was a big crisis. I, um, we, we, we were actually uh, uh, clients of Mount Gox at the time that it failed. Uh, we saw the writing on the wall. We were lucky. A lot of people were not lucky. They lost a lot of money. I think in total, uh, we estimate, and this is an estimation, there's probably more, there's probably less, but in terms of hacks, um, we think that uh, there's close to $23 billion that's been lost. So uh, that's a huge number. And it's sad because uh, every, every one of those dollars was, was someone else's at some point. So, so one thing that was really important uh, for Kraken and the Kraken story uh, is that it was born out of this problem. And it was born as a solution to this problem. So it was uh, Jesse uh, Powell, he was the founder and remains the founder of, of, of Kraken and CEO. Uh, yeah, he, he actually went over to Japan uh, and, and helped out. He was on the tools, um, you know, like he was writing press releases for them. He was just a client. Uh, he had no other affiliation, but he knew that it was people like him but that couldn't afford to lose anything, that had lost money. So he, he uh, was really instrumental. Uh, since then, um, Kraken has been the nominated trustee for the Mt. Gox insolvency, and uh, we've been participant to the, the, um, the whole process, really, as a, as a trustee uh, of the crypto assets that were left and remained in the business. So, yeah, Kraken was born out of this fire, or this, this kind of this, this deep cut, um, and, and essentially the goal behind starting Kraken was to, was to build an exchange that people could trust and that, uh, that regulators would be happy to deal with because one of the big problems with Mt. Gox is that it was, the regulators hated it from the beginning. So, um, yeah, it, 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 the industry has changed a lot in the intervening period. Um, I think that that reputation has been really important for, for Kraken. It's pretty much, that's what it relies on. Um, uh, it's not out there sponsoring uh, F1s, but it is out there uh, making sure that uh, people who use the platform assets are safe. And, and that will continue. So, you know, some of the things... Uh, oh, we got feedback. Is that all right? You can hear me okay? Yeah. So some of the things I think worth mentioning, um, because this then plays to, to, to Web3, is that, um, you know, when you're dealing with a platform like Kraken, it's, it's all cold storage, pretty much 95% of all the assets on the platform are not hot, so you can't hack them out. Um, you know, all, all the servers are guarded. I mean, we're talking kind of, it's almost like old school gold vaults. I, I often describe exchanges these days as being very much like a souk or like a market of old where you bring your goods or a fruit market. You bring your goods to the table. You have to bring your goods to the table. When you're dealing in that market, you're dealing with, you know, hot property. And uh, I don't mean in the negative sense. I mean, it's on the table. You can, you, you, you can see it. Um, it's not guarded. Um, so we try and minimize that risk for people. Uh, one other thing that we do is we, 
we work really deeply in the community. And this is where I think there's a, there's a really interesting crossover to what we, you know, I think, you know, we're a centralised exchange, but the crossover to decentralised markets. And so one of those touch points is our relationship with cold wallet or hardware wallet providers. Um, we, we find a lot of the bugs <laughs> for them. Uh, there's a couple of examples I'll click forward. Um, there's, there's a slide I forgot to click before. There's, there's Mount Gox um, and then Jesse. But this is a couple of things that I think are really interesting. One of many, in fact, you know, like Touch ID, we, we release videos quite often on the risks of, that, that, that you carry when you use everyday uh, security devices that you might buy um, on, on the web or, or even from reputable providers. Like, you know, we, I don't use Touch ID on this machine, for example. Uh, we've got a great video <laughs> of, um, I think there was, there was a, it spun around the web actually, there was, someone just put a bit of sticky tape on, on top of the, the touch ID and picked up the fingerprint. So, you know, um, these are kind of things that we actually instruct all of our employees to do. So it's not just about security for clients, it's also about how we, how we imbibe crypto practices into the business. And, and, and a couple of those really, um, important practices that we we deploy through the platform, you know things like two FA, sure, yeah, um, ca customizable API keys, sure, but PGP. So we use we use um, crypto in our email comms, so you never get uh, fished if you if you're using if you're receiving emails from from Kraken, um, and uh, it's all fully encrypted. And then the other thing we do, which is kind of interesting, is we use. Got to remember to hold this. It'll, it'll rem rem remind me to click the thing forward. Um, uh, we use Merkle trees, so we use the thing that makes something like Bitcoin work to uh, prove that we have uh, assets in cold storage. So when you uh, want to know if you know, I mean, one of the big issues we've seen lately is insolvency um, of of third parties, uh, and so yeah, we actually allow people to check with a third party, an auditor but using de-identified data structures to prove that the assets we have on our platform exist in our vault. Um, so you can go to a website, another website of an auditor, uh, accounting auditor, and you can, you can plug in your identifier and you can um, see that those assets are, um, well, they are there, they're there, provably. Um, so I think, the reason I talk about all of this is because there's a distinct parallel. And one of the cool things today is um, I'm actually going to be kind of giving you guys an exclusive, like literally global exclusive as to what we're building next. And it's an NFT marketplace that kind of deals with these problems or attempts to. So um, uh, so yeah, this is, I guess, the, the experience that we've got uh, when it comes to managing assets, we want to bring that to managing non-fungible tokens and all the things that come along with that, you know, whereby an NFT sure is something that might be a profile picture, an image, but it might be a key to allow you to unlock your social media account. It might be uh, a housing that lets you get into all sorts of other platforms. It might be um, the assets you use in games or whatever those, whatever those use cases might be. Uh, we want to provide a portal for people, but with that trust and security in the back end. Um, so, why? Um, I kind of talked about this a little bit. We see that the, I mean, when we first made a crypto exchange, it feels very similar, I think, in terms of the time frame between these two worlds. And, and NFTs just being one, I think, of the um, umbrella catchphrases that we use to describe, you know, crypto adoption. It's, you know, it's instead of it being... I think about guessing what's what's happening next, which is the first five to ten years definitely were about guessing. Um, you know, which of these crypto tokens are going to be the ones that are used in things. Well, now we're seeing things used. We're seeing stuff being built uh, using blockchain or crypto either in the back end or in the front end. Uh, we are um, we're seeing uh, businesses, new business models derived from crypto. Uh, and so, yeah, th this is one of the early stages, I think, of where, where things are going. And, we, and that's why it's really important for us to bring what we do to this space. Um, but guess what? The same stuff that we saw happening in 2011, 
is happening today. So NFT marketplaces, uh, these are quite small. Sorry um, that you can't see them, but I'll just read through a couple. So, you know, phishing scams, uh, people clicking uh, signatures and their wallets being drained, uh, platforms themselves getting drained. Uh, the list goes on. The same problems exist. And um, that's, that's part and parcel with innovation. When you've got a space that's moving so quickly and people are building products so quickly uh, and trying to get to market, like that's just natural that you build things and then there's mistakes. The problem is when you have a mistake with crypto, it's a mistake you can't fix. So I think the other day I saw a platform lock up a couple of hundred million dollars worth of their own token in a smart contract they can't unlock. You know, so things happen uh, with severe consequences. And, um, and so this problem still exists. The problem that we solved for crypto exchanges still exists today, but now for these non-fungible asset platforms. And they're quite different. They're different to a marketplace for fungible tokens. So fungible token being something like Ethereum or Bitcoin, where you trade them and you have a market engine, you know, an engine, whereas a non-fungible token is more like an auction. You know, you have buyers, you might have multiple buyers for one item and they bid up. So, so they're different kinds of infrastructure, but they have the same, the same underlying problem, which is that they can break. Yeah, so we're, um, we're really keen to address this. Um, uh, I, I think I talked about this. So this is an example of a scam on OpenSea where all these apes and other, uh, other NFTs were stolen, about 250F at the time in August 25. Um, yeah, so, so these, these problems are happening, you know, that's, that's um, a couple of weeks ago, right? So these problems are happening. And this is an experienced, uh, an experienced person, someone who has been around for a while. Um, you know, there, there's, lots of, there's lots of attack vectors and you've got to be diligent. So, um, yeah, I don't want to scare everyone, but I think that's, that's the point of this. That, when they said, what do you want to talk about? I said, I want to talk about this, because <laughs> this is happening. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, the top priority for us is well, why, why, another, why another NFT marketplace, right? Um, well, the, the, the thing is, we think that you need to have secure places to be able to access these uh, arenas, and that's what we're good at. So we're going to do that. Uh, so yeah, I think um, we want to offer products and services that allow people to buy, store, and interact with NFTs seamlessly, the same way we allow them to do that with crypto. Uh, and I think that the key thing here is that we don't need to be the only market. We just need to be a way that people can access markets. So um, fundamentally, we will be a bridge between your account and, say, a decentralized market like OpenSea, right? Um, so you'll be able to, and I'll show a couple of um, things later, you'll be able to interact with markets accordingly. Um, so, yeah, I think some of the, the core things to mention, I've got a slide here that's a bit small, but I'll kind of talk through the key points and how, um, and, and, then, uh, and then I'll show you a couple of screens and we can talk about how you could become a beta tester if you wanted to try this product before it's live. And then, yeah, I can, then we can maybe go to some questions if you want to upload them into the app about anything related to, to um, this or, or other. Um, but, but basically, if we, if we talk through some of the key um, features, uh, zero gas fees, so that's going to be interesting for people who want to trade or buy things that are, you know, assets and games and, you know, small value items that I think are going to be the key for the future of NFTs. It's not about million dollar JPEGs. It's about using this technology as a way to do what we do on the internet better. And it doesn't necessarily mean everything better. Everything will be better by using this technology, but there'll be certain things that are way better. Um, so really, really kind of trying to make that accessible so we don't have the problem of people spending, you know, accidentally spending as well. You see, you see, you see sometimes people entering the wrong uh, digits into their, into their um, uh, contract and they, and they spend uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in fees. 
we don't want that to happen. Uh, you know, the things that we're good at are bridging, bridging cash, you know, Aussie dollars into decentralized markets. So we'll do that for NFTs as well. Um, security that I've talked about what we do behind the scenes. Uh, uh, rarity scores, so all that kind of stuff will be there. But fundamentally, the interesting thing I think from my point of view is that this is about using the security infrastructure to connect you to existing marketplaces, to connect individuals to decentralized markets, because it's all contracts in the back end. Uh, and that will play out across not just NFTs, but also other decentralized uh, marketplaces or contracts. So we want to be a portal for people that allows you to interact without the risk, and ideally with less cost. Um, so yeah, uh, here, here we go. No one else has seen these. Like, I'm not joking. This is not a big beat up. The, I had to like ask Jesse if we were allowed to show these screenshots today. So, um, so, so you know, here's some um, screenshots. It's not, it's not, it, you know, it's another market, right? But um, some cool stuff I think uh, is that you'll be able to, you know, buy mul buy buy stuff from multiple blockchains in the one platform. Uh, via the other marketplaces. So essentially execute on different markets um, using whatever underlying currency you want. If you happen to be someone that can only think in terms of ETH, that's fine. Some people can't think that way. Some people need to think in terms of you know, US dollars or Aussie dollars. We want to be able to make that really simple. We want to make that uh, something that is also a no-risk pathway. So when you interact and you say you want to buy a particular item from a Solana marketplace, you're not plugging your private key in to your browser or using MetaMask and revealing your signature to the world. It becomes actually a private experience. So the, the, um, the custody of that asset will be handled by, by Kraken, but will be in, in your account the same way that that happens with, with crypto, other cryptos that we have. Uh, uh, what else can I talk about? Um, this is an Aussie. This is a great Aussie. This is actually from up here. I don't know if, I don't know if any of the Dead Fellows people are here, but um, uh, this is an example collection, Aussie collection, um, you know, the ability to make offers in any currency, to, ex to have that executed in the background on whatever marketplace that happens to exist in. Um, it might be on our market, in which case that's fine as well. Um, yeah, so I think what I'll do at the back end, at the very end of the show, is I'll, I'll chuck up a QR code. You could you can sign up, and, and then you can um, message me on Twitter, and we can add you guys if you're interested in, in becoming a beta tester for this platform, because it is not live. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think um, I think there's lots that you can do with decentralized tooling, uh, but there's also an important thing which is how do you get people to use that in a way that means they don't stop using it because they're too scared. And I think that's where we are, we are right now in terms of the decentralized marketplaces. They're very complicated, they're costly, and they're risky. And we want to kind of solve those problems using, using the tools that we, we have in the back end. But that doesn't mean that we are, are anti-decentralized markets. In fact, um, we're dependent on them. So. Uh, you know, there's, there's a huge amount of, I think, a, a, a transitional journey for a business like Kraken to go from uh, a market for uh, cryptocurrencies, a speculative market for cryptocurrencies and the liquidity that we provide there to, to move towards becoming uh, a hub for your, your decentralized life. And that's kind of where, where the business is going. But, but I think what it's, what it's saying is it wants to put you at the center of that. Um, so yeah, we're really excited by all that. And um, yeah, I think, I think like fundamentally what we think we're good at is what we want to do for, for the user base is be the, the, the safest and most secure way to, to access these tools and to engage and to, and, you know, to, use, to use Web3, whether that's you know, buying a picture, right? Okay, that's a very simple use case or whether that's, um, Having an avatar in 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 a in a um, in decentral land and having 
having assets there and having a kind of digital life there that you care about and don't want to lose. So there's a big kind of narrative arc um, for us that, that we think is important to, to bring the skill set that we have um, to, to these arenas. Um, yeah, so I've got a couple of questions here, which I'll go through. And if you want to add more, I think we've got, how long do we have? We've got four minutes, so I'll be really quick. So I think um, what I'll do is while I've got them up, I will put this QR code up. So if you put that QR code up, if you, if you wanted to sign up, you can get 10 bucks in BTC. I think that might even be 10 US equivalent. So happy days. Um, uh, if you can't get that today, just hit me on Twitter. I'm at J Desmond Miller. Uh, I'm not sure if you can read that either. At J Desmond Miller, just hit me on Twitter and I can send you that link. That's fine. Um, but if you do use that link and then you hit me, uh, then I can add you, if you're interested, I can add you as a beta tester for, um, for the NFT marketplace. We're looking for testers that understand NFTs, but we're also looking for testers who don't, because that to, to us is the critical thing. You know, It's scary, this whole idea that you might have, have a digital asset um, that lets you into things and you might lose it. Like I left my phone in the Uber the other day and, the guy, and I was like, oh my God, uh, how do I even get into anything? Because I can't even get into my email now because I'm all like productively paranoid. That's the use we use. So yeah, like I think the questions I've got here, there's a couple that I think were all up. One of those is, um, one of those is, um, what role do you think distributed identity will play in Web3? Well, I guess that's kind of like an um, interesting point because I was just making that. I think that the ability to engage with third-party websites will become uh, dependent on you having some sort of digital ID that is crypto. Now, that might not mean your picture and your date of birth. It might mean something a bit more abstract than that. But absolutely, a, a, an identity that you use to plug in to... Uh, we, we do that without, you know, login with Google and stuff like that. But then imagine that a, a much deeper thing. I think that, yes, distributed identity is something that will be very helpful. Um, creator royalties. So that's a good question about Kraken. I, I actually forgot to mention it. All creator royalties are honored by the Kraken platform. If you use the Kraken NFT platform, all creator royalties will be going back. The, the smart contracts will be honored. Um, uh, utility to holders of NFTs when they don't have custody. That's a question. So the custody, it's still linked to your account. And we uh, already have unique uh, deposit accounts for every user for existing crypto. So it'll be the same. Uh, and, and, and essentially, we're also looking at other ways we can service people to have wallet access. Um, and last question that I think is really good is for security, what is the... Um, what is the root cause? Is it the user or the platform? I think it's both, sorry, <laughs> boring answer, it's both. In the cases of some of the hacks that I put up before, it's absolutely um, a combination because the user, you know, the user experience patterns that people, they log onto a website and says, click these 10 certificates to even trade. People just get used to clicking, right, without reading. And if you do that, you put yourself at risk. So there's that side. And then there's things like, you know, uh, custodial uh, providers who, you know, um, who have poor balance sheet management. So that's a kind of business thing. And then you've got decentralized exchanges that might write a bad contract and have, have liquidity pools locked up and, you know, they can't access them. So we see, we see everything, but I think user, in the end, you have to do as much as you can to mitigate those risks. And we actually also say with Kraken, it's really important to spread the risk. Even, even though we have a great track record, we encourage people to use, you know, their own wallets, you know, non-custodial wallets, um, when they don't want to be active with those tokens. But, you know, at the same time, we try and make, whenever people do plug in with us to make that really secure. I'll just see if there's anything else before we wrap up. Um, I think we covered the questions. Yeah, I think that's it. It was a bit of a rapid fire question situation. Look, thanks so much for sitting with me on a Sunday morning. Uh, it's really early, I appreciate it. Um, Make sure you hit me up and, uh, and yeah, we can, if you're interested, we can, we can add you and you can experience something really new that we're doing. Uh, and I wish you all the best with your, with your day. Thanks again.